Hello, good morning. I'm Crystal here on Quok Talk, Culture of Women Time. Today we're going to talk about an aspect of women that deals with sports, it deals with sexuality, empowerment, and Title IX. If you don't know what that word means, well, we're going to unpack that today because we have an important person describing his process of filming this really, really important project that uh, reveals all about this. Uh, with no further ado, let us invite the director and producer of Rise of the Wahine, uh, Champions of Title IX, Dean yes. Conachero. Thank you. Thank you for so, having me. So, director, producer, actor, Puna yes. Red, local guy, father of six. Whoa. Sure. Let's <laughs> pile it all on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confused suddenly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I need to talk about you being a father of six first. Okay. Because I don't know anybody who has six kids now. And, yeah. You know, that happened yeah. like generations ago. Well, before. we had twins in there. The third time around, we had twins. Okay. So that wasn't planned. Still. Boy, girl, twins. And <laughs> then we did choose to have another one. So that made five. And then my wife is a resource caregiver. She's a trained resource caregiver. So we, uh, it, it, which would be a foster care for at risk um, infants. Huh. And so then we ended up uh, adopting um, my second daughter, yes, oh, wow. through that. So I have from 18 down to almost three. And they're all living in your house? Yes. What's We're that? all, it's like a circus. It's a fun, <laughs> exciting adventure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. And I've learned a ton. And I think creating the film um, has really helped open my eyes, I think even more so, um, to not just what my daughter's world, you know, the world that they're growing up in and that they live in, but um, definitely my wife and, and what she walks through and our relationship together, the dynamics. Um, and as you know, things are shifting and changing. And of course, Title IX, my contention is that Title IX legislation passed in 1972 has had the most change um, in America, if maybe not the world, you can argue for that probably, um, than any legislation that's been passed since women got the right to vote can in Can you do a simple recap of what Title IX is for people who aren't aware of this? Sure, sure. And I, I'm not saying I'm an expert on any, no. any of these issues, but I had to learn a lot about it to do the film. But yeah. um, Title IX is 37 words. Um, that was passed, legislation that was passed in 1972. It was a long road of lots of different pieces and a lot of different players, but our own Patsy Mink, Maui born, the first Asian American woman, the first woman of color who was elected to Congress um, in the late 1960s, played a role in that. She was working with Edith Green and uh, Birch Bay and others. Um, Dr. Bernice Sandler, who recently passed away, I want to say just even a few weeks ago, um, at the end of last year, I believe it was, or maybe it was in January, um, she, although not a legislator, was involved in the process. She's known as the godmother of Title IX, Patsy and Edith as mothers. I'm not sure what the titles are they've given them. But anyway, they stewarded um, this legislation and put pieces together. And basically what it says is that um, any federal money that's being given to any educational institution, you cannot discriminate against women. You can't discriminate based on sex when it comes to access to the programs um, involved in, in education especially. And so that was their driving force. No one really knew that Title IX was going to have an impact in athletics at the time. Mm -hmm. um, even Patsy and them, the, the women then were not seeing what we see in the WNBA. When you watch women today, it's incredible, the athleticism, right. the power, the strength, the college, all the scholarships. Um, we didn't, they weren't even seeing that, I believe, um, from their own admission. But they, were, they did know quietly that it would impact the equal you know, distribution of funds, the equal opportunity that women should have in colleges, universities, high schools, etc., who are receiving federal funds. So that's when the controversy exploded. It was passed in 1972 quietly. Huh. Um, and like, yeah, let's get women, you know, uh, opportunities in education at the time. And this is real hard for young women today and people to understand. But, you know, Patsy Mink herself wanted to be a doctor, denied entrance to medical school over yeah. 12 times just because she's a woman, just based solely on that. You know, we take it so for granted now. The younger generation don't even know what it means not to have that privilege uh, right. or, or taking that away. Right. Um, we recently on the, at the East West Center had a keynote speaker, Justice McKenna, who spoke about yes. her experience of, course. of, of being a, a, an athlete and getting the, having the access of that to uh, give pave the road to her uh, with the scholarship into university, yes. yeah. which they didn't have previously. Yeah, and she's featured in our film. Excellent. And was wonderful. Uh, yeah, and now um, someone that I, when I see, just so thankful for her and she knew Dr. Donis Thompson, who's the first, um, uh, the woman's athletic director at the University of Hawaii, the first full-time. And so, anyway, just her, yeah, her, what, what Title IX opened educationally for women across the country 
um, has shifted everything in our country. And now, of course, there's more women getting degrees, more women graduating from college, et cetera. But at the time, it wasn't like that. And it was, it was I'm not going to say that it was like women hating, like we don't want women here necessarily. I mean, there could have, obviously, there was a lot of sexism at the time. But some of it was just, hey, women have, this is what they do in society. We're just going to take two women in this program, and then we close the door, that's it. Because why would women be in this program or whatever? So a lot of what I learned even, it wasn't necessarily antagonistic in right. many ways to women. Some of it was just, why would women want to do this? Or why would women want to play sports? Or why would they want to play full court basketball? Let's just keep them out. Or if they court. play, they can play outside outside of their household duties when they have a little spare time. It's a little out fun of thing. Yeah, a little, little play day on the yeah. side, a little sports day for women. But here's <laughs> where, what's driving income is men's football and basketball and right. all the other programs that exist, even if they have a fledgling little women's program, it all comes off of that. Yeah. Now Title IX shows up, and now it's like, no, you have to have equity in your funding. Boom, people are losing yeah. their minds. Yeah, equal rights. What does that mean? Right. Yeah. And so we didn't know. And so at first it was like, you know, so the NCAA and coaches and legislators are all going, no, we need to remove the athletic portion of Title IX out. So this is what people don't know about Title IX, even to those that are aware of it. Patsy Mink, our very own here, who, who goes to represent Hawaii, you know, there yeah. in, in the late 60s, right. early 70s, begins to understand, hey, there's another group that I'm representing, which is just women, you know, at large. After Title IX was passed, yes, she has the legacy of being a co-author of Title IX. But really the reason why she should be remembered and celebrated, especially in Hawaii, is because she championed and defended Title IX in the years to come when it came under attack saying, okay, you can have women in chemistry and biology, but this uh, athletic thing's got to go. Nice. She had to rally the troops. Dr. Donis Thompson over here, connecting with her crew nationally and, and locally, said, we've got we to support no athletics needs to be a part of the Title IX universe. But why was that challenged? Why were people kind of not allowing for that support? Was it the athletic associations that they not want to share their pool of resources? I mean, where do you think Yeah, definitely. That? Well, okay. some of it was driven by my money in the sense, and I don't mean greed, I'm just saying like the, how you can't damage the two men's sports, football and basketball, that are funding everything else. So even if you, I'm down with you having a volleyball team as women or whatever, I'll share my gym a little bit over here. Hi. Even if I'm down, how are we practically going to do that? Now, I'm not saying there wasn't sexist attitudes in the midst of it, too. No, I'm, not trying to paint, it, right? I'm not going to try to paint that picture. Yeah. So there was a lot of that, and they had to fight a lot. But no, it was a humongous cultural thinking shift that had to happen as well as practical. What does that mean? Women have to then come to the football team? Like, there was just mass confusion right. for a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of simplifying of it, right? Generalizations of what it means to include women into certain areas that are deemed masculine. Yeah, well, especially sports, because yes. this is the domain of men. If we know anything, this is where we roll, this is where we operate. And so for women to now come into, back up into that space, and there's a great line that someone shares in the film, is that's what their domain was. So there was a threatening. Suddenly they're in the weight room. Now they're sharing our gym time. And Dave Shoji, uh, head coach of the Wahine at the time, of course, the Rainbow Wahine volleyball team, tells those stories. And so, you know, look, we're the basketball team, and you just have to wait for us. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Just, there's just, so there was discrimination in that sense. Again, how much of that was, you know, antagonistic? Or but how much it was a sense of the either. timing of, of the 60s and the relevance of, you know, the surge of the women's movement in response to all right, that kind of right, right. And then, of course, Billie Jean King and that right. social explosion that happens. In, I, I want to say it's 1973. I couldn't put that in the film, unfortunately, just because it costs right. too much to get. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a nightmare. It's like... Eight million dollars for one photo of this oh thing, my but God. Um, yeah, but yeah, that. but it's just yeah. So that then socially kind of launched Title IX in discussions even greater. But nonetheless, even today, people don't really know much about. I didn't know about it in 2011 when I first heard of this story. Much less Patsy Mink's involvement, Dr. Donis Thompson, Dave Shoji, the creation of this program here is the story that we tell in the film is that is a fruit or that's kind of like let's zero in on the personal stories of one program in the nation yeah. while this is happening so what we do is we bounce to washington dc the halls of washington dc i mean in the most dramatic stories you can't believe surrounding that and then how that was impacting through this friendship of patsy and dr donis thompson okay. how that was impacting what was happening here right. dr donis thompson herself born as a black girl in sh the ghettos of chicago and <laughs> you know i mean her journey of overcoming and saying those doors were closed to me as a female athlete wanting to play golf wanting to play tennis but hey you're not the right color or whatever you can't so come in it takes a personal story it's, per it's very personal then you know enters dave shoji and then now you have this kind of scrappy asian girl <laughs> kind of 
you know, against the UCLA team in California. Right. Then you have this David and Goliath story that's happening in the midst of it. It's very gripping, and it will blow your mind if you're local and you've never heard the story. Yeah, so tell us, like, what motivated you to decide on this project? Sure. Well, Beth McLaughlin, who's really the third sort of lead character in this film, so she is from California originally, but is definitely a local um, Hawaiian-hearted um, woman who was the first team captain of the first um, Rainbow Wahine volleyball team. Well, we were just interviewing her. I was w interviewing her with a friend. Just like, what does it mean to be Wahine? And we were doing a little thing for Hawaiian Airlines. What does it mean? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, for the majority of them, they were saying, hey, it means to be a role model. And young girls look up to me. Mm -hmm. And I need to make sure that I'm you know, a leader on and off the court, and et cetera. And so everybody that we interviewed was saying something of that nature, which is powerful yeah. and amazing. And they're kind of celebrities here, and have been, definitely. And today, she starts to tell other stories. She was there at the beginning. She knew Dr. Jonas Thompson. She was aware of Title IX, understood. So she's crying and she's telling stories and then she's describing this David and Goliath battle against UCLA and how can they establish the, pro the program that we know today, yeah. people don't know how that was right. established. Right, okay. And it's brilliant and it's innovative and yes. it's amazing and it really a lot goes to Dr. Jonas Thompson as well of, of course, the girls and, and what Dave Shoji was doing with the team at the time. But it was during that interview that I saw like this Disney inspirational film kind of a thing. I'm like, what is this? And so when I went home and just started Googling and Patsy Mink's name and Title IX and Donis Thompson and all these stories and that's when I got These hooked. untold stories. They're it's untold. really important. Yeah. The untold stories that need to be told. Yeah, and they've never been told like this from a national and then zooming into local and national. That I think is also the key. Some people know pieces of it. Yeah. But even Dave himself, my co-producer Ryan Kalei Suji, who, who was assisted assisted Dave for eight years, yeah. even those super close to the program, women who have been through the program, have not seen it presented in the way that it's presented yeah. here. And that's and why I believe everybody yeah. should see No, it. it's brilliant because we're representing Hawaii and it's in context to this national big problem. So let me ask you, how do you think, I mean, this is an ongoing challenge and it's getting, it seems to be getting more and more complicated, but how does gender <laughs> and sexuality play against each right. other? Or it almost kind of, you know, goes on top of each other when it comes to yes. these fights for equality. Yeah, and I tell you, it's so layered, and what's difficult today, I would say, on a grand scale, is that it's unfortunate to watch the nation, I don't mean this, I don't know, it doesn't sound judgmental, but it's, <laughs> Go ahead. Do, we have the, do we have the emotional intelligence, is really the answer, do we have the maturity as a country, and as individuals, to sit across the table and say, these are the layers that are involved in gender relationships, and dynamics, and money, and sports, and and it just takes a lot. And it's unfortunate to watch in this kind of sound bitey swipe and scan culture. Yeah. Like, it's just easy to make it black and white. And it's not black and yes. white like that. Because we're so consumed with like a dominant um, way of thinking because how media just kind of frames things for yeah. us. And we yeah. don't know how to look Yeah, and it's so good it. guy, bad guy. And it wasn't yeah. then. It isn't like that today. Now, there are black and white lines. There are things that you don't cross, sexual abuse. I mean, there's things right. that of course are in the dialogue that yeah. we, and thank God for that today yeah. is being exposed more and more in every industry, Hollywood, et cetera. Um, but then you come into nuances in the home, you come into nuances in the workplace, yeah. you come into nuances where we need to have conversations. And so I think for me, when Beth was talking, it hit my heart in a way where it made me say, I don't know as a man and as someone who half Okinawan even, but never, told I can't do something based on my gender or right. my ethnicity. And here this woman saying that's been her life, that's been her fight even to this day, what's happening. And I just said, I need to go on this journey to better understand today mm -hmm. as well as the past of what women go through and what young ladies and girls are dealing with. I think your, That's uh, your perspective is really important um, in that not just as a director of Rise of the Wahine, you, you've uh, unpacked many important issues, but as a man and as a father, right. I think when we come back from the break, let's talk a little bit about how men can empower on, women now. in your way. Yeah. You know, let's sure. flip it a little bit and talk about the same thing from a different perspective. So don't go away. We're talking about Rise of the Wahine with Dean Kanashiro. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired. 
like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, back on Clock Talk. I'm Crystal here talking to Dean Conoshiro on Rise of the Wahine and about female empowerment and how men can help women. You know, we always uh, focus on what it means to empower ourselves as females, but we seldom think about how men can be encouraged to support and to empower and to bring light to the weight of a woman's position. Uh, and so Dean's talking about that. And before the break, you mentioned as a father, of, I still am blown away. Uh, no. you're, you're, you're trying to create a ba your own basketball we team, right? Father you're empowerment female. is what we need. <laughs> I mean, so, um, yeah, how has your being a parent and after producing this uh, female empowerment film sure. transformed your ways of seeing the importance of how men's position is in this whole conversation? Yeah, well, definitely. I'll tell you, we recently, Dave Shoji, uh, Ryan Kaleitsuji, the co-producer on this film, and myself, we were a part of a panel at the Wahine Forum. Okay, okay, so this is once a year, and I don't know the full history of it, but I think it's Hawaii Business Magazine, right? They put on this thing, and it's women and entrepreneurs and leaders. Yeah. So oddly enough, in their 10-plus years, I'm not sure how long they've been doing that, but uh, we were the first men that were on a panel. Okay, so but what, what this means, the reason I bring that up is because um, Jill... Um, Nuno Kawa, who's featured in our film, she's a Title IX advocate and, and attorney. And, um, we were talking about the film Bud, the Wahine soccer coach, um, she's on the, on the panel. We started talking about women's self-care, okay? Mm. And a lot of these are moms, a lot of these are entrepreneurs, women who are juggling a lot at home. And the emotional response, because I was watching the women as, as Jill's talking about how she started to learn, I have to care for myself, I have... And, you know, she's fighting a ton over the years. And she said, you know what? I just need to have a peaceful heart. I need to love people. I need to take care of myself. I need to yeah, love myself. Yeah, me time. Right. And so she's talking about that. So, and women are respond like tears. Like, I mean, it's serious, right? And so I'm, I'm watching the women just respond to what she's saying. Yeah. And, and then I jump on and I say exactly what you're saying. I said, hey, listen. This, I just, I said, look, I'm going to throw something on the table here because I'm new to this conversation. You all have been having it for decades without yeah. me, so to speak, and without the inf the input of men in many ways mm -hmm. and, and rightly so I'm not disparaging that I mean it had to yeah. be for women in many ways but you guys can cheerlead each other and talk self-care all day but if I'm married to you and you come home and as your husband as the work have children to get like if I am not on the same page as that yeah. if I don't understand my role in supporting you in that you do you see what I'm saying yes so then where are we and that's what I'm advocating for that's what I'm putting on the table I'm saying hey men we have to come back and re well, I'm not sure if we were ever part of the conversation, but we have to now engage in a way that we haven't. And if it's just between guys too, that's fine. But <laughs> that's women, better, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. only go so far. Right. And I feel like women are maxing out in some ways. Like, okay, we're dealing with the institutionalized sexism. We're changing legislation. <laughs> we're dealing with stuff. Now social sexism exists. I get it. But when it comes to the practical real life yeah. transformation, to get women into that next evolution of what it is that equity looks like, equality looks like, value looks like, men have to now understand, okay, the rules have changed for us. Okay, but how do we um, open that kind of possibility? Because I, is it, do you think it's because men feel like they're, if they're running the household and they're the ones who are making all the effort to support the family and do all the stuff when they come home, you know, it's almost a kind of a self uh, narcissistic attitude of saying, hey, I'm the one who needs the help here and support. Right. You know. Right, right, right. So this is what <laughs> people have to do. They have to start up. by watching Rise of the Wahine. Okay. Champions of Tone, <laughs> yeah. At riseofthewahinefilm.com. No, seriously, I, I created the film so that fathers ultimately can sit down with their sons and say, let's walk through some of this history. Let's li listen to these stories. Let's open our hearts. Yeah. Men have to start with their hearts. And here's what I'm going to throw on the table too. I think men have to call out other men right so i think Wait, sorry yeah. did you see the gillette commercial that was controversial before yes i did okay 
Okay, so we'll just recap. If people have not seen that, it was very controversial because you know it is. It, it's it's a movement to show how men should should encourage other men to support and do anti-bullying, and yet Correct. people were criticizing for saying, "Hey, you can't use this platform because it's a commercial." Yeah, yeah. we we have to do part three and part four of yeah, your show yeah. to get into. But there's a difference between toxic masculinity and masculinity. Okay, I'm glad you brought that. And up. And so the healthy masculinity, I believe that the commercial was trying to portray. Obviously, I have no problem with that. Can they do it perfectly? Are they going to miss some things? Is yeah. it a big broad? Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I get it. But I mean, yeah. who, who can miss the point of what they're... And I love the fact that their slogan has always been a best a man can get. And they right. were talking about how we look. And now they're saying, <laughs> how, what is the best that a man can be in yeah. life, in the home, with their children, how we raise yeah. boys? Yeah, so what is it for you? Well, I agree with the commercials in the sense that guys should be calling each other out. I believe that we should be awakened. And they were dealing with a lot of the negative kind of a thing. But I'm saying to awaken to what my wife, what the women that I'm working with are mm -hmm. dealing with at home... There's nothing that says just because male strength, yeah. male-dominated ways of living, etc., has dominated both the home, I think, in many ways, as well as our culture, as well as workplace. I think there's no, way, there's no reason why we can't have a conversation to say, how can these things shift and change to include women's voices and women's version of strength? What does feminine strength look like in a company and, and as a leader? And the truth is, is that... Man, there's so much to talk about. But I, I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> it's, a, it's wrong to have women think that they have to be like men yes, to yes. then sit at the table. Now i got to be something that I'm not. But see, the only way that that can change, again, is if men honor and celebrate what feminine strength and leadership looks like and change the culture of male strength only. Male strength is strength. No, that's not true. Yeah. And so there's even studies in a professional workplace environment. Let's take just inclusion in a leadership team. Mm. It's just a stat, it's just a reality that when leaders n not just are saying, hey, look, it's my way or the highway, guys, is what we're doing, yeah. but says, what do you think? What's the best way to do it? What is your experience? How can we... As equals. It's inclusive. Equal and then, then we make a decision. Yeah, maybe ultimately I have it as a leader, but let's make a decision. Right. Okay. That inclusive way of leading is, no is, is known to be a great way of leading. Yeah. And it just so happens that women lead that way more naturally, the more inclusive men sometimes are more, it's mm. my way or the highway. That's, yeah. what, that's what male dominated strength it's looks that, like. I think it's a sensitivity thing. I think some people think, oh, the sensitivity thing, the emotional stuff is the feminine way of being and therefore sure. not as strong. So there's sure. a misunderstanding of how power is kind of presented. Right. Um, I'm glad you mentioned toxic masculinity because there's kind of a, a surge and a trend in that word right. in, in using in this woman's movement. But I think it's really, because that's obvious, it's the stuff that's not toxic, the things that are kind of marginally, um, you know, intrusive, that are okay. dangerous sure. because we don't see it. And I think, sure. you know, a lot of men might say, hey, I'm sensitive to my woman's needs. I, I do this for her. I do that. Right. And then people don't see what's going on underneath. I, I think there's mm. that concept of what you can't see. Like, you, you know. No, sure. And, and the reason I'm saying there's a difference between toxic masculinity and just masculinity, and I think that's what people were offended by with the Gillette commercial, the ones that were offended by it, were trying to say, hey, you're just calling us out overall. Don't yeah, be strong or don't defend or, yeah. yeah, don't, you know, fight in the army. And I don't think that's what the commercial was doing. But there's, that's what I'm saying. There's still more that we need to talk about and separate those things, saying, no, we're saying when that strength gets perverted into objectification, dehumanization, whatever, right. abuse, that is, we have to call that out in each yeah. other, right? That's the Trump tape with the guy in the bus. Oh, gosh. Go, sorry to go back to that, but I I'm just, that. no, but I'm saying it's awful for him, but it's the guy. <laughs> it's the, good, yeah. it's the guy he's with. Right. Right. And you don't, we don't know, train to flip the lens and look and question. Yeah. And so we what, what healthy men should be doing is saying, hey, bro, that's not the way that we should talk about women. Yeah. Well, what about educating yeah. sons? Because... That, exactly. That, that's the conversation that's lacking a lot of times. We as, you know, grown-ups can talk about this. Yeah. But how do we talk? I have two sons, and yep. I always think about, like, how do I bring that in? But I don't want to, you know, impose it. It has to come natural, and it has to yep. become normal conversations wherever, whenever. Yeah, so two things that I'm going to throw on the table. Number one, obviously, an awakened, sensitive, empowered man in, in their home and, and father is obviously number one. But to have conversations with pop culture events that are happening mm. over dinner, Hey, we're hanging out. What did you think about this? Hey, yeah. this happened in the news. What's your take? And, and, and raising our sons and our daughters to be critical thinkers. Yeah. But the heart piece as well, and this is one thing I'll just share real quick, was that when I was talking to my sons, and I do this with my sons, okay? Because obviously this, is, this film has helped awaken yeah. me. We take books. We'll go eat, talk story. So I said to my oldest son, he was about 16 at the time, I said, hey, of all the things that we've talked about, how, how do you know how to treat women? Uh -huh. 
how do you know what the new rules of 21st century male yeah. you know, manhood is? And I thought he was going to say, well, Dad, because you teach me. Like, we've talked about these things. He did not hesitate. He said, because I watch the way that you treat mom wow, and my yeah, sister. Wow, yeah, that's huge. We only had one daughter. I only had one daughter at the time. He didn't hesitate. He said, you empower my sister. You treat her just like the rest of us. And the way that you support and treat mom. So I'm not, I'm not trying to build myself up here because I'm still growing and I need to learn. But I'm just saying... Men, young men, watch their watch. dads. Absolutely. Yeah, which I think a part of the Gillette commercial was about. But nonetheless, whatever you think about the Gillette commercial, don't trip over that. <laughs> Forget the Gillette commercial. It doesn't matter. Right. But, yeah, but it's, it's how, and it's coaches, male teachers. Yes. It's, 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 who are we as uncles and, and leaders in, in community? How do we, so that's where it has to start. Yeah. Um, and I think that our, our young boys are the future. I mean, this is what, and this is why I made the film. And they, they come in interesting, small little um, pieces, like over a meal, over an appetizer, Correct. where you just like... It's small bits. It's yeah. not... But you know, you but if you, if, you, if, you, if you grab a film like this, you sit down with your boys, I want you to watch this, and why yeah. don't you talk about it, talk with our daughters, our wives, how can yeah. I better serve you? Right. You know, and I think for men, a lot of us have a lot of apologizing to do in our homes... Is um, another thing I'd start with? I think and say, we just started. I think there's yeah, not apologize. I don't agree. I think we just started. And in fact, I when I when Wonder Woman came out, was it yes. a couple of years already? Yeah. I took. Uh, I noticed that in the audience, there were mostly um, moms and their daughters, but there's the lack of the fathers and Come their on. sons, or even mothers and their sons. It's like we've just put everything divided and reinforcing that division. No, we totally. need to open in that conversation again. We have so much to talk about. If people <laughs> even find this remotely interesting and, and, and important in our lives. We have an upcoming very important uh, panel discussion hosted by the East West Center. Do you want to talk about that? In fact, we have a flyer, I think, that has Yeah, so that's coming up. I think it's next week. Super excited. Yeah, this Sunday. Okay, come on now. Yeah, please come and join us. And I'm going to be there. We're going to be talking. Um, Pat Psyche, who's in the film. Um, but we're going to watch the movie together, and then yeah. we're going to have uh, these conversations. Um, and... Uh, we invite you to come, and if you um, want to watch the film before or watch the trailer, you can check it out at riseofthewahinefilm.com. Um, you can reach out to me at info at riseofthewahinefilm.com. Uh, but well, check out the trailer. You can rent, stream, purchase a DVD. I can't believe the DVDs still exist, but here they are. Um, if you want to order one, we can ship it to you as well. So, um, so yeah, all the information is on the website, It is. Correct? Everything's there. Yeah, Rise of the Wahine Film. Com. Yeah, you're very thorough, Dean. Uh, trying, but I yeah. want you to end this conversation with some kind of a um, message, I guess, from your experience, your loaded richness in your life to yeah. the men and boys out there. Yeah, definitely, uh, first and foremost, just want to say to any dads, any men who are working as leaders in companies, because this definitely has bled into my life, in, into the office as well. Um, yeah, let's just start with opening our hearts asking questions, maybe talking less and, and listening first. Not, not, not talking at all, but just <laughs> listening first. Um, but most of all, I think it's fathers. And I think um, any of you who have sons or men that look up to you, young men that look up to you as a coach, whatever it is that you're doing, let's start by, and again, I do feel like saying, hey, this is where I've been off. Here's where I want to commit to, and I want to listen, I want to grow. So that's yeah. where it starts. And watch the film. Watch the film with some young men in your life too, and your wife. Yeah, bring it all together, <laughs> yeah. everybody over a meal and family and friends. And just, um, it's important to address these conversations. And I hope you can join us this Sunday again at the East West Center to discuss further and to get perspectives from different areas too. We have this, you know, a PhD student, we have a um, member from the government, we have yeah. everything. So it, it impacts everything, doesn't it's it? Really, it? It does impact yeah, everything. And definitely. this is a local, global issue. And so yeah. thank and you. And we have again. a dad. We have a dad. And there. we have a dad. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has a dad. So, again, welcome. Uh, enjoy. Thank you so much for Thank everything, Dean. Yeah, All right. Thank it. you so much for tuning in.